Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hype Gazette, here with the next video, and this is a Town Hall 9 video. We're talking about a 7 Golem Avalanche. Crazy attack, but it works, and I have some attacks to prove it. So let's get right into it, not gonna waste any time. Let's take a look at the first attack, but basically, um, you guys might remember a few months ago, maybe more than a few months ago, almost a year ago, um, the Golem Avalanche was popular against dead zone bases. It used four to five golems, some wizards, a surgical deployment around the base. This is the same thing pretty much, except we're using seven golems and just ten wizards, uh, four jumps of poison, and that skelly spell. There is the seventh golem in the clan castle, by the way, the level six golem, and uh, this is that base I built in the Town Hall 9 anti-witch base video, but this is a good base to use this strategy on, and it is a Town Hall 11, but it has all Town Hall 9 defenses. Don't ask why, it's just a complication. So anyway, taking a look at this attack here, you can see basically you started off with like three golems, the queen, um, and enter one compartment with a few wizards, then you jump into the next one, you have another golem meet up with your main force, you have more wizards. I went ahead and delayed the king, I don't want him to get too far out in front, so I dropped him with that next entry point. Um, and the point of the jump spells is to do two things. The first is to connect the golems to the to the next compartment, the golems that are already inside the base, to let them reach that next compartment, but the second purpose is to connect the golems that are outside the base, the new golem that uh, you just deployed, to let it enter the base. So uh, you can see right here that did not happen with that uh, level 6 golem. The jump spell can't quite reach it, I believe. But um, for the most part, the jumps were bringing all new golems in, allowing them to join the force. And there's that last jump right there, perfect placement. It'll allow that level 6 golem to get in there and help out with the tanking. Um, even though I only had 10 wizards, look at how many wizards are still left up. I think 6, 7 wizards, so not losing a whole lot of my DPS. Last wizard goes down up top, pop the queen's ability. She kind of did not behave too well and she got off track went the opposite direction, but the wizards and the king were enough DPS to keep those golems moving, and you can see here this base is toast, awesome stuff, uh, really fun attack to do. A little bit of a novelty, uh, definitely a novelty attack, not typically going to be a better option than like a hog attack or something that's more consistent, but against the right base, you know, maybe it will be, we'll see, I've tested it a little bit, maybe we'll see it in war somewhat, but that's it, seven golems, let's take a look at another attack and... Uh, we'll take a look at one that did not work and then one more that did work on a different base. So this next attack was my first hit on this base right here. This is a different Town Hall 9 base. Uh, the last one had a little bit more dead zone in the middle in terms of there not being a whole lot of defenses in the core. This one, um, it, it's a little bit different in that the expos are pretty central. So I wanted to do a base that might be a little bit more tricky to try to test this strategy out. Uh, this is the first attack here. And whenever you're doing this strategy, you want to identify at least some kind of relatively dead area on the base. Let me just pause the video real quick and explain what I mean, then I'll uh, keep the attack going. Basically, for this strategy, you want uh, one of your flanks of your kill squad to be protected. And when I say a dead zone, I mean no point defense. It's okay if there's a wizard tower, um, it's okay if there's like air sweepers, air defenses, the clan castle, but this area right here, this like four, uh, these four buildings, not much of a threat. Um, the wizard tower uh, is not too much to, for my queen to handle, so that's not that big of a deal, but this is kind of the dead zone I identified. Then you attack parallel to it, sending my troops in this way, and even though there's a flank out here with point defense, that's where I'm going to deploy my golems and let them meet up. So you want to find one dead zone area, um, or at least somewhat dead zone, to send your kill squad in next to that first push with like three to four golems, the queen, some wizards. Then uh, you add on to that from the outside of the base, and you just work your way around this kind of central dead zone. If you can identify at least something, it's not that central, but it works. Um, uh, well, this attack doesn't go for a 3-star, but it works in principle. Uh, the queen just gets weird. I had to use her ability really early because the CC somehow got onto her, and uh, 
had to use the ability so she didn't die. And then she does not walk in the base either. So that made this a very difficult attack. You can see a few archers are all that's behind those golems. If there was like even one wizard back there to take out that expo and later step up for the queen, that would be a lot more helpful. But there's nothing in there to kill that expo. And the attack kind of falls apart if you're like if your troops peter out partway through before you add in your new forces. So I dropped the king with more wizards to reinforce as you typically do. That's the kind of jump spell placement I'm talking about. Um, it lets the golems that were in this compartment up here uh, enter the next one and it brings the golems from the outside of the base in to meet up with them. So you want to look for that kind of jump spell placement and you want to accomplish both those goals with your jump spell. Uh, the queen actually goes down to a wizard but that expo is what's going to haunt me not going down Plus, not having the damage of the queen makes this attack very difficult to 3-star if your queen goes down early because she's so much of the DPS. You only have 10 wizards in your heroes, and losing your queen right at the beginning is not going to be the best thing for the attack. And believe it or not, you can run out of time on this attack, so you've got to be careful about that. You don't want to like um, wait too long to drop your wizards or your heroes. Sometimes you can drop the king just right in with your kill squad. I like waiting for the clan castle to go down because oftentimes he'll run out ahead and like attack the Valks or something which uh, will get him killed pretty quickly or make, him, make you have to use the ability which isn't good either. You want to save that king's ability to a little bit later on because when you pop the king's ability he tends to run out in front of the golems and that can be a little bit dangerous as well. So this one peters out, it goes up to about 90% but can't quite get the job done um, with that expo and then with the lack of time I have left. So uh, tough luck there, but that's that's the basic principle. Just uh, send in like three golems, your queen, some wizards, then uh, drop those jumps, have your king meet up at the second location typically with more wizards, then your next golem, wizards jump, next golem, wizards jump, and uh, it can work on a lot of bases. We'll take a look at one more attack on this base, uh, the cleanup attack, the next attack I did that was successful for a three star. So uh, fast forward to the end here as these last troops go down and let's take a look at that last one. All right, here we go with the attack. Um, same principles, same entry point. Uh, just gonna place the queen a little bit differently, I believe, and allow her to go into the base. The CC helps pull her in as well, uh, which is a good thing. So she steps up, starts to do some damage. Three golems at the beginning, that's typically a minimum because uh, those golems take damage very quickly. You don't want to get caught using too few golems. I actually went ahead and dropped a fourth just because you, if you're bringing seven golems, might as well you know, just go ahead and put the uh, four down at the beginning because you only have three jumps uh, for those three additional golems. One for each typically is a good idea. So the queen is in the base, all good there. She is going to step up for that expo, which really hurt me the last attack and get that thing taken out. Um, the wizards, the next golem, waiting. You can get the golem down ahead of time, let it just sit there on the wall for a moment, let the wizards come up behind it, then drop the jump a few seconds later once the wizards have caught up and let the golem walk into the base. So you don't have to drop the jump in the golem right away. I like bringing that skelly spell to help kill the queen. Now, that bomb tower was kind of guarding the queen a little bit, but oftentimes you'll find the queen locked onto a golem, and if there's no splash damage, uh, or even if there is splash damage, if it's being tanked by something, you can drop that skelly spell and take out the defensive queen or the defensive king really easily. That goes for defenses too, because when the golems are tanking, those defenses are stuck on them, so the skelly spell can be a very valuable tool to take out distracted defenses or heroes. Uh, next jump goes down, once again, the two principles, moving the golems already in the base to the next compartment, and allowing a place for the golems outside the base, the ones you're adding, to enter and join the force. The king finally comes in and joins the party. The queen went down. Um, that might happen sometimes. Uh, due to her range, she can be a little bit of a tricky uh, force to to keep behind your golems, but uh, not the biggest deal. She, she got stuff taken out quicker, so there's still a solid minute left, I think, uh, 40 seconds in the replay, but I think there's about a minute left at this point. So the king steps up, and right here I'm popping his ability, um, right there. So saving that ability, basically you don't want to use the ability until you have to, because as soon as you use the ability, he's going to run out in front and get targeted by defenses. But you don't want to use it too late to the point where you run out of time. You want to do it just right. If there's only a few defenses left up, he can take the damage. Um, it's worth it at that point. So he gets a little bit low right here, but it was definitely worth it to get that burst, take out those buildings quicker. 
than just that Tesla's left up. And look at all those troops that are trying to get in there. Um, two golems, a few golemites, the king and his barbs and some wizards, at least before that giant bomb went off. So that is it, 100% three star. So my recording software just timed out uh, a moment ago, but let me wrap up the video in this next clip here, just saying that that is it. That's the strategy, seven golems. It's crazy, uh, but it can work, and I'm looking forward to seeing it more if other people start to use it. I recommend you guys try it out in friendly challenges before you take it to actual wars, just because it is kind of experimental. But against the right base, especially when there's not a whole lot of defenses in the core, if you can just do the things I talked about, identify a dead zone, send your kill squad in next to it, uh, so one flank is protected with the it's like three to four golems, your queen, some wizards to start. Then the next golem, the king, the jump, more wizards. Then just another golem, the jump, another golem, jump with wizards behind it all. The jumps connecting. Uh, once again, the golems already inside the base to the next compartment and allowing the golems outside the base that are being added on to join the force. So that's the strategy. Thanks for watching. Hope it helps you town hall nines. And I'll see you guys in the next video. I sect the Tron out.